Chapter 36 Lu Xu didn't have the time to argue with Yi Lingling. He was pondering over his remaining 8,000 distress points. How should he use them? By celestial fruits directly? It didn't seem like there was a need for it now though. His training wasn't considered slow, so even without the celestial fruit, he was slowly improving. At this point in time, the two snowmen in the garden had already melted into two stacks of snow. They looked nothing like they did, and Lu Xiaoyu even mentioned that it would be good if there was snow again, so that they could rebuild the two snowmen. In the darkness of the room, Lu Xu suddenly smiled. He previously had a question. Lu Xiaoyu didn't have any method of training or ability cultivation, so even if she was given the refresher fruit, there was no way to tell if she has reached the limit of the use of the fruit. But come to think of it now. There's no harm in that, it could just be to strengthen her body and improve her health. Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xiaoyu. Wake up, Lu Xu went over to knock on Lu Xiaoyu's door. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 399. Lu Xiaoyu opened the door gloomily and silently stared at Lu Xu. Lu Xu took out a refresher fruit and passed it over to Lu Xiaoyu, eat it. Only then did Lu Xiaoyu's expression brighten, turning back into her room after receiving the refresher fruit. Not long after, Lu Xu knocked on her door again, and Lu Xiaoyu annoyingly exclaimed, Lu Xu, are you doing this on purpose? Why can't you give me everything in one shot? What do you want? From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 666. <laughs> Lu Xu handed the remaining seven refresher fruits over to Lu Xiaoyu, and then trudged to the kitchen to cook eggs. Now he only had a little over 1,000 distress points left, but he was still feeling good. However, he can't keep gaining distress points from Lu Xiaoyu like that as she will soon retaliate in some way. Having given Lu Xiaoyu eight refresher fruits, he estimated that it was more than enough for her. If he could devise some method for her to train in future, he could continue researching with Lu Xiaoyu if she should eat more refresher fruits. Having eaten the refresher fruit, Lu Xu felt and looked different. In the past, he would only feel healthier after eating, but eating to the limit this time, even the birthmarks on his body had disappeared and his skin and complexion had also improved. Looking directly at him in the mirror was what seemed like a reborn teenager. This feeling was great, who didn't wish to look better? And after Lu Xiaoyu ate the refresher fruits and washed up, Lu Xu was stunned. Lu Xiaoyu seemed much more refined than before, and it felt like they were advancing towards breaking the physical limits of humanity. Lu Xu looked at Lu Xiaoyu, and Lu Xiaoyu stared back. She didn't know where these fruits came from, but she understood that they definitely didn't come easily. Most people would keep the good stuff for themselves, but Lu Xu gave her so much at once. What is this? Lu Xiaoyu asked calmly. It should be considered as something which improves your aptitude for abilities. In future, if you could train and cultivate skills, you would understand its use, Lu Xu explained. Aptitude for abilities. Lu Xiaoyu walked to the dining table and waited while Lu Xu cooked. Currently, there was a huge commotion outside. Not just over the awakening of metahumans, but over training as well. Many people already went to temples and monasteries to look for masters, but not many succeeded. Some of these places were originally meant for tourists, but now they have shut their doors to visitors. How much aptitude is needed? Even if she didn't train, Lu Xiaoyu wanted to know. She suddenly said, Actually there's no need to make me eat them in a rush. I have yet to start training anyway. It's okay, Lu Xu said, Having eaten this, you wouldn't fall sick in future. It's a good thing as well. Mm, Lu Xiaoyu nodded her head. She didn't say words of gratitude directly, but she will remember all these acts of kindness and remember this person well. At this time, Lu Xu brought the food over, where's the work you were doing yesterday? Bring it over to let me check. Don't think that you can relax after the new year. What if you can't keep up with the academic workload in school when you're admitted to school at 16 years old? Even if you can become a metahuman, you still have to learn. 
It's not to let you learn math or governance for you to use them, but to build up your logical and thinking skills. There's a difference between being a civilized person and one who is not. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 67. Lu Xiaoyu suddenly felt that this person was not good at all. She unwillingly went back to her room to retrieve her book for Lu Xu. She had yet to complete the work assigned to her by Lu Xu. Lu Xu didn't think that grades and results mattered much, but the process of learning was essential. This morning, Lu Xu didn't let Lu Xiaoyu follow him to sell eggs, and instead wanted her to self-study. He will be back at night to explain to her whatever she didn't understand. Lu Xiaoyu could be considered as an unregistered resident. She wouldn't have her own account until she was 16. Even if she wanted to go to school, Lu Xu didn't have the ability to send her, and they didn't have the money as well. Thinking of this, Lu Xu felt that he should think of ways to earn more money using his special gift. Lu Xiaoyu staying at home, not learning anything or interacting with people made him feel slightly depressed. But Lu Xiaoyu was similar to him in the way that she was also rather eccentric. Going to school didn't mean she might make friends. The difference between them was that Lu Xu liked being alone and he felt that interacting with people was exhausting. As for Lu Xiaoyu, she felt that people of her age were too stupid and immature. When Lu Xu closed his shop to report to school, it was already late. He dragged his stuff to school, and once he entered the class, he noticed that Lu Li was no longer as excited and lively towards him, probably because he had given up on him. He just wasn't used to others being so warm without reason. Why were people so hypocritical, as they all had a reason for being nice to someone? Everyone was surprised to see Lu Xu bring the small pan and the stool into class with him. They didn't expect Lu Xu to wake up to sell eggs even after being selected for the Daoyuan class. Perhaps the poorest metahuman had given up and accepted his position as a reserve? To everyone else in Daoyuan class, he was just a reserve metahuman. Lu Xu was initially admired by other people, but now those admirations have slowly cooled down. There was nothing much to admire about a person cooking eggs anyway. Regardless, Lu Xu was always different in the eyes of other students. Chapter 37 Ever since Lu Xu realized that his day training was a kind of semi-automatic ability, he had never stopped doing it. He had no idea what had changed in the flame within his heart and could only wait patiently. During the lessons in the day, Lu Xu no longer dozed off but was more concerned about the world news and an interesting one popped up today, in another country. A member of a terrorist cell had awakened and killed two people, but he was then killed by three other metahumans who happened to be there. Amazingly, these people were not concerned with the fact that there were onlookers. Although the credibility of this news was unknown and the Golden Foundation's website did not seem to have any updates on this, but if that really happened, it meant that the metahumans in other countries had started using their abilities openly. This sort of news was previously unheard of and was very interesting. Lu Xu did not have a reliable source of information and could only observe and deduce the world's situation through this dubious news. He had a sudden inspiration that if an authorized website could upload daily news regarding metahumans, this could educate everyone about what was happening in all the parts around the world. But however meaningful this might be, if such a website was created, the advertisement fees being received would be enormous. To a high school student such as Lu Xu, he could only think of this kind of methods to earn money and nothing else. But who was capable enough to pull this off? This required someone who had the connections and access to a lot of ongoing news. Other countries' media had already started broadcasting news regarding metahumans, but locally, there was nothing. Seemed like every country had different restrictions and censorship. In the day, Lu Xu wanted to mess with some students to generate distress points but never got that opportunity. He had earned too much the day before, causing everyone to still be in a bad mood. Even Yi Lingling was sulking in her seat and not running her mouth off as usual. The students who did not make it into the Daoyuan class all seemed dispirited. After all, seeing other students given the opportunity to become someone amazing while they had to settle for studying hard for examinations, had left them with a sour feeling. Lu Xu felt that he should do something to lift the mood. 
teenagers should not be so moody every day. So he sent a message to the class group chat. Yesterday, I saw a metahuman and her powers could be useful to all of us. The secret is. By the power of Bala, Shaluo Shaluo, little devil. Transform. The classmates who saw this message were lost for words. What kind of metahuman could this damned little devil be? Was he still normal? Did he awaken some disgusting message's power? Everyone developed high hopes from seeing the first part of the message thinking that there was a secret to awakening. But it was actually just some nonsense. Are you sick in the mind? From Yi Lingling. This time, Lu Xu had earned almost 2,000 distress points and adding the points this morning from Lu Xiaoyu and Yi Lingling, it was almost 3,000. Lu Xu felt that this method of his was a perfect match. It was invincible. At this moment, Li Qi from class 7 came to the doorsteps and smiled. Can those students selected for the Daoyuan class from this class please step out for a moment? Everyone started exchanging eye contact thinking what could be going on. What did Li Qi want with them? It was already common knowledge who was chosen for the Daoyuan class, but only Li Qi was an actual metahuman. He spoke confidently and in the past. Li Qi was already an infamous student known for being in gangs and getting into all kinds of trouble. In the future, you would think that these people are the trash of the society who are unable to earn a living or make a name for themselves. But as of now, there was some kind of charisma to them. Teenagers were generally more simple-minded and preferred direct and violent methods of dealing with problems. Violence had become a growing problem in schools and this was because the students lacked discipline and were still rather immature, thinking that doing so would make them seem powerful. Lu Li's facial expression changed. He had never been ordered around like this before and it sounded like Li Qi was going to beat them up. This was what gangsters did in school. Who and who please come out for a while and they would drag them to the toilets to give them a good beating. Lu Xu did not really mind. At that point in time, his strength had far surpassed that of Li Qi after lighting up the fifth star. And there was a rumor that Li Qi could not even write properly after he awakened, which meant that he had no control over his powers. But Lu Xu never had an issue with this, being able to control his powers at will. With these as backup. Lu Xu did not care if Li Qi wanted to find fault with him and it was a good opportunity for him to observe other metahumans at close proximity. While Lu Li, Yuan Lingqi, and Li Qingyu were still contemplating what to do, Lu Xu had already walked out. For some reason, Li Qi had always thought that the way Lu Xu was acting was suspicious. As the rest followed and went out, Li Qi leaned against the wall and snickered, we are all part of the Daoyuan class. You guys may not be aware but the percentage of students from our school in Daoyuan class is not even 5%. So we all have to form a gang. Add me on WeChat and I'll create a group later. Lu Xu almost laughed out loud. This guy was just like Lu Li. But he had a bigger ambition to consider the school as a whole while Lu Li only confined himself to the boundaries of their class. Lu Xu had thought that the Daoyuan class was actually not so complicated. But to create a gang, would the Black Coats even let that happen? They were already labeled as unstable beings and if a gang had started forming, nothing good was going to happen. Lu Xu had also thought that Lu Li would succumb to Li Qi's prowess since he was an actual metahuman but Lu Li just turned around and left. That thing about forming a gang, let's forget about it. Li Qi smiled and did not reply but turned to Yuan Lingqi and Li Qingyu, how about you guys? Lu Xu was fine with it. Gangs, to him, were, the more the merrier. After joining a gang, he could add the newly met people on chat groups and that would mean more people would see his messages. The number of contacts in group chats was Lu Xu's bread and butter. He had already realized that the fastest way to train was to rely on people. In the past, Lu Xu had never agreed with the importance of being people-orientated but now it was different. Being people-orientated was such a high-level intelligence. Lu Xu felt that his mindset had just transcended to a higher level. Li Qi was still clueless about the competitor he had just invited into his gang. Chapter 2 
Chapter 38 Li Qi allowed Lu Xu into the group and they added each other as friends online. And of course, Li Qi had to give his introductory speech as he patted Lu Xu on the shoulders, we are considered brothers once you enter this group. We can't be weaker than the students from the other schools since this school is our home ground. Keep it up guys, if I can awaken, so can you. <laughs> Lu Xu opened up the group chat and saw that there were over 70 people in this group, which was more than the number of people in his own class. Interesting. He didn't care about earning glory for his own school, forming gangs or whether others had awakened or not. With his sole desire being the group of people which he could interact with, the more the merrier. United we stand. Yet another noble, far-sighted wisdom. Lu Xu sent his greetings to everyone in the group and started adding them as friends in his contact list. Li Qi was pleased to witness that this classmate of his was very sociable. Actually, Lu Xu was rather well known within the school due to his circumstances, and needless to say, any other student in any other school who sells eggs outside their main entrance would definitely be famous as well. Most people knew that Lu Xu was a sickly, fragile looking orphan who brings another orphan around. But what they did not expect was for Lu Xu's name to make it to the nominal role of the Daoyuan class. Currently, everyone in the group who was enrolled in the Daoyuan class had one common trait. Even before becoming a metahuman, they were outstanding in their own ways. Lu Xu, however, did not fulfill these criteria. As week one arrived, it was time for Daoyuan class to start its curriculum and Li Qi sent a message to the group. At night after class, shall we all gather for dinner? There's a steamboat place along Jiandong Street which is quite decent and it opens until quite late. Since we're in the same class, let's take this as an opportunity to foster good rapport between each other and to learn more about one another. Sure, I don't mind. I've been there before, it just costs about $10 and you can definitely eat your fill. Alright, we'll be fighting the same war in the future so let's get to know each other. <laughs> Just a bit of alcohol and we'll know each other very well. Li Qi replied while chuckling. As for Lu Xu, he had no interest whatsoever when he saw the chat group. He didn't have any money and was definitely not going. Were 10 plus dollars considered money to him? Nope. It was considered his life to him his life. Speaking of the Daoyuan class, what are they actually going to teach us? Does anyone have any insider info? Their confidentiality is so flawless that even my dad who works in the government does not have any news on it. God knows what they'll teach us, perhaps a way to awaken to our powers maybe. Will we be enhancing ourselves there or something? Lu Xu suddenly realized that if so many of these metahuman reserves were to really awaken, then where would they be placed? It would definitely be most suited for the organization to adopt all these new metahumans as part of their own force. He did not join in the discussion but found out that the neighboring class female student was part of this group as well, while he was adding those new contacts as his friends. After adding her as a friend, he even sent a smiley face to her. In the end, she just read the message and did not reply at all. TSK TSK, so unfriendly. That day, Lu Xu felt that her personality could possibly be more introverted than others, and that was why she was observing calmly from the sidelines as everyone was making a commotion in the chat group. Yes, calmly. At that moment, Lu Xu acknowledged that this girl could perhaps be more intelligent than Li Qi as she was concealing herself within the ranks of the reserves. Lu Xu guessed that he was probably the only one in the whole school who knew that she had already awakened. And as for himself, Lu Xiaoyu was the only one who knew about him. There were many new faces in the school just from this afternoon. They were all students who were here with their parents to carry out their transference procedure, as those who were selected to join the Daoyuan class had to be enrolled in this school. Right after class, Lu Xu was looking over the railings at the corridor towards the mass of people. The crowd was too messy and he could not detect any waves of powers being emitted from any of the transfer students. It seemed like even if there were those who had already awakened in that group of transfer students, there weren't many. There were a few transfer students arranged to join each class and for just Lu Xu's class, there were 11 of them. 
The citywide enrollees of Daoyuan class had all gathered in Luocheng International School and on average, every class had to accept quite a number of transfer students. Lu Xu realized that all those who had transferred to his class seemed rather energetic. And amongst them was this skinny female student who looked exceptionally good with her short hair and her mixed blood looks. Her choice of clothing was a little tomboyish and she had an air of coolness around her. But some guys preferred this type of girls, and there were all types of girls out there for every sort of preferences. Since there were new students coming in, they had to rearrange the seating plan. Yi Lingling suddenly became agitated and throughout the whole process, strongly requested to switch places in order to avoid being deskies with Lu Xu. She was afraid that Lu Xu would bring out the worst in her. Just at this moment, that mixed blood girl was chosen by Shi Qingyan to be seated beside Lu Xu and a lot of people in the class shot him a look of envy. Lu Xu was shocked to find out that this girl, when stood up straight, was just a little shorter than him. And for your information, Lu Xu was 180 centimeters tall. This girl was rather polite as she sat down and smiled at Lu Xu, good day. How good. Lu Xu subconsciously shot her down. This guy did not discriminate as to who he was cynical to, be it gender, age, or looks. The other party was flabbergasted. Her new desky did not follow the logical order of things. How was she supposed to reply him, how could she have known how good his day was? From Jiang Shui's distress, plus 27. Jiang Shui thought for a while and changed the topic, my name is Jiang Shui, I transferred over from second middle high and I'm a boy. This time, it was Lu Xu's turn to be stunned. He felt that if he could absorb his own distress points, he probably would be able to redeem a whole celestial fruit from it. Lu Xu checked out the other party's throat and saw that he really had an Adam's apple. Oh my god, Lu Xu had no strength to protest. No wonder that a girl was almost as tall as him, so she was actually a dude. The other party even specifically stated his gender which meant that he had been misunderstood by others often. After looking at his Adam's apple, he continued to scan downwards. Mmm. It's flat. From Jiang Shui's distress, plus 189. The situation was very awkward as his downward gaze was caught by the other party and Lu Xu gave off two forced coughs, before remaining silent. In the evening, Shi Qingyan entered the class and gave Lu Xu and Lu Li's gang of four, including the eleven newly transferred students a pass each which could be worn around the neck. He then told all of them that they needed this pass to enter the school after 6.30 p.m. After class had ended, all the form teachers stood outside their class and ensured that no students stayed behind, clearing all of the classrooms. Even basketball games were not allowed in the courtyard and everyone had to go home. Subsequently, the school grounds were filled with many sturdy-looking security troopers who coordinated the clearance of the school. Lu Xu could not help but let out a sigh. Their job was executed thoroughly and while Lu Xu was leaving the school, he saw with his own eyes that these security troopers cleared every single class without skipping any single one. There were almost a hundred of these men and this security service was not something a school could afford. Classes would end at 6 in the evening while the Daoyuan class would commence at 7. As such, Lu Xu rushed home to prepare dinner for Lu Xiaoyu and in the process, instructed her to focus on her revision. After preparing dinner, Lu Xu found out that the clothes he had changed out of from yesterday were washed and hung up on the veranda, causing him to feel a little happy inside. Chapter 39 In the night, Lu Xu had to flash his student pass to get into the school. Daylight was short during winter and by 7 p.m., the sky was already pitch black. Lu Xu realized that the school was still very lively. Students from different schools were gathered here and they amounted to almost 2,000 people, and he wondered if the music building was even able to accommodate all of them. The music building was seven stories high and each floor had four classrooms. This meant that each class had about 100 people. Even after removing the tables and chairs, would there be enough space for everyone to sit? While making his way to F9 classroom, Lu Xu bumped into Lu Li. The class rep did not seem as confident as usual, 
probably because he had realized that their original plan of forming a gang had been proven useless in front of the crowd. The number of transferred students was already a few times larger than the gang they had. If they really wanted to form a gang, Li Qi should have made use of his status as a metahuman to gather all the Daoyuan class students from their school which would be more likely to succeed. But Lu Xu felt that Li Qi's actions and plans had never been reliable. He had asked around in the afternoon and the eleven transfer students in his class were all from different schools. Lu Xu could not believe that this was a coincidence and was rightfully afraid that this was a plot by the officials to prevent forming of gangs and groups. As of now, only the Luocheng International School students were not split up and sent to different schools. But because of the transfer students, every class was facing a communication crisis. If this was the case, Li Qi's plan would be a failure. But this was expected. Their organization had gone through detailed planning to set up this program and gather all these potential metahumans in one place. It would be an insult if they were to be easily overwhelmed and outsmarted by a group of high school students. Logically speaking, Lu Xu felt that in this Daoyuan class, the information it could provide was by far more important. A single city already had almost 2,000 potential metahumans. How many would there be in the whole country? Probably a few million. Lu Xu did not probe further, but he knew what he had to do in order to hold his standing in this world and to protect himself and Lu Xiaoyu get stronger. What point was there in life if he was to bring Lu Xiaoyu out one day and a metahuman came along and murdered them? Lu Xu had also confirmed that no one else was emitting waves of aura and thus, compared to all the students his age, he was definitely ahead in terms of progress. Unless someone awakened into a class E metahuman. It was unclear how these classes were allocated. Lu Xu finally found the F9 classroom which was located on the first floor of the music building. This was convenient for him to travel home. As he entered the classroom, the class form teacher was already waiting and the classroom's interior surprised Lu Xu. The chairs and tables were all removed and replaced with floor mats. This made the classroom seem much more spacious. Using floor mats instead of tables and chairs, this could allow even a hundred people to be accommodated here. Seeing the design of the classroom, everyone had confirmed that this Daoyuan class aimed to really teach the methods on awakening. How else could you find a school these days that still used floor mats? Speaking of which, Lu Xu and the rest had no idea when these floor mats were brought here. Lu Xu was thinking that since the class was called Daoyuan, could it teaching the ways of the Dao? Could it be some kind of meditation? It seemed like the priest inhaling and exhaling clouds atop the mountain shown on the Golden Foundation's website was real, and he had already reached Class D, which meant that he could evade attacks from modern weapons. Just how fast could he move and how quick his reaction must be to do this? But Lu Xu already had his own way of training which was different from the ways of the Tao. If training the ways of the Tao would not work for him, what was the point in attending the Daoyuan class? But he could only decide after seeing the real training himself. If the Daoyuan class was going to teach all those things, how were the black coats planning to keep the lessons a secret? If his speculations were right, they must be planning to mass-produce metahumans. Within the group of students, it was possible to make one student not spill the beans, but not all of them. All the students were already in their respective classes, and even the ambitious Lu Li who was aiming for the top of the Daoyuan class, had already toned down. Sometimes, people just did not understand the saying, there is always someone better. Perhaps it was because he had been a leader in Luocheng International School, but now that leaders from other schools were all gathered here, people like him had become the norm and in fact, there were people who were much more talented. Shi Fei closed the classroom door behind him and smilingly introduced himself. My name is Shi Fei and everyone here should be able to recognize me since I have been going around and losing my voice from talking to all of you. I'll be handing out some papers now and you all will be required to sign and put your thumbprints on it. While speaking, Shi Fei started handing out the papers and the title was Dao Yuan Class Confidentiality. The contents of the paper highlighted the secrecy of the contents of the Daoyuan class, and if violated, they would have to face charges from the military court. 
Lu Xu had never come across such a thing and could not be sure about the validity of it. But even though he did not really understand the contents, the one thing he understood was that the consequences of violating the confidentiality were severe. However, Lu Xu felt that the officials were not expecting to keep so many mouths shut just with a piece of paper. There must be something more, right? Why was this program set up? I'm sure some of you have some guesses so could these people share their thoughts? Shi Fei had a sweet smile and gave others a very approachable impression. Lu Li raised her hand and Shi Fei pointed in his direction, you may speak. Learn the ways of Tao? Lu Li answered. Shi Fei nodded. This was the basic answer. The job of keeping the information confidential was going quite smoothly as of now but this was a human society, and it was impossible to completely shut off the large group of students from the rest of the world. The organization had also thought about this and even though they could select the students based on their own set of requirements now, given some time, the various dignitaries would start pulling strings and influencing the selection in order to benefit their own children. Who knew how long this situation could be maintained? Eventually, regardless of the aptitude of the student, dignitaries would come up with ideas to enroll their children into Daoyuan class. Before this program proved its influence, why not just treat it as a form of a leisure class, like learning to play the piano or martial arts, they would all have some form of long-term benefits, right? Chapter 40 In the upcoming period of time, I will guide everyone in terms of learning about the theoretical aspect of training, but need not be nervous. It'll just be some basic knowledge, Chi Fei explained, it seemed like the main issue was here, the content of the lessons of Dao Yuan class. However, seeing the way Shi Fei spoke, it didn't seem like they were going to learn methods of awakening, but another gentler and smoother approach to improving. Lu Xu felt that this seemed more reasonable. This stretches the time span and gives everyone more space to think. Will some students be eliminated in this period of time? This was not entirely impossible. And only teaching the important skills after establishing team spirit and cultural education seemed like a good method. Lu Xu was nonchalant. If they had indeed imparted higher skills to them immediately, it wouldn't be too reliable or trustworthy. Shi Fei asked again, Does anyone know how we selected you? This time, no one could guess the answer. Everyone had this question in their mind, how were they selected? Previously, everyone had their blood drawn during the health checkup. The name list of Dao Yuan class was released soon after, so everyone only knew that it had something to do with the checkup and drawing of blood. But no one knew the specific details. Shi Fei looked at the silenced students and smiled slightly, anyone knows the alloy of sodium and potassium? You might not have learned this in high school. Let me ask a simpler question, what is sodium? Can this student answer the question? Shi Fei pointed at the student behind Lu Li, which was coincidentally Lu Xu. What is sodium? This question was so sudden, what was the sudden relation to this? Why did Lu Xu study language and literature? Logically, he was doing very well in maths and could probably do well for science. But he absolutely hated physics and chemistry, so much that he chose to study language and literature. Lu Xu bit the bullet and asked, Sodium. Sodium is a mystical heavenly path? From Shi Fei's distress, plus 357. Shi Fei showed signs of confusion. That answer wasn't at all expected, he thought that these students would say sodium is a type of chemical element. He also thought that these students might say that sodium will not exist on Earth naturally since sodium would oxidize in the air rapidly and have strong reactions with water and could only exist as a compound. He never thought that someone would say. Sodium was a mystical heavenly path. Your thoughts are rather eccentric and creative. This student, take a seat, Shi Fei took a breath and continued, sodium is a chemical element, and the alloy of sodium and potassium, after stabilizing in a liquid state, could be used in a fast neutron reactor as an effective cooler. Of course, it is also a thermal agent in nuclear reactors, and the alloy of sodium and potassium is more dangerous and must be stored in an inert gas. 
However, we unexpectedly found that it has other functions, it could test the reaction of blood to the aura of the world, commonly known as the aptitude for abilities. We found out that once the sodium-potassium alloy comes into contact with blood, the blood of ordinary people will cause the alloy to give off huge amounts of heat, while that of people with an aptitude for abilities will have a different reaction. Instead of emitting heat, the metal will turn from silver to black. The darker the color of the product metal, the higher the aptitude for abilities the person has. Currently, the accuracy of this technique is as high as 99.99%. Lu Xu gained massive information from the words of Shi Fei. The first key information was that these people actually found a way to differentiate the different aptitudes for the abilities, and it also seemed like a very reliable scientific method. The second information was that there was definitely a master or someone skilled in this group of people. Such a high-level experiment, there should be someone who could control the explosiveness of the reactive alloy. With such a large proportion of blood from normal people, there was bound to be a huge explosion. Or else everyone near the experiment would perish. And these masters were not in small numbers. After all, the blood was drawn from the entire country. Thinking until this point, Lu Xu halted his thoughts. There was too much work to be done for this testing, there were millions of high schools in the entire country. On top of that, there were primary schools, secondary schools, and even colleges. Lu Xu thought that the government probably had a more efficient and higher skilled method. Shi Fei continued, we classified the aptitude into six tiers, abdef. We use the classification to differentiate the potential. Later, you guys will be able to see what tier you belong to. Of course, I want to say one more thing. Your tier does not determine your future accomplishments. The training still requires much dedication. If anyone cannot tolerate this lonely journey of training, feel free to quit. At this moment, Shifei didn't mention what would happen if they quit, but everyone couldn't help but think about it. Shifei didn't say much about it, and created a class chat group, I will announce everyone's aptitude in the class group. Everyone may go take a look. Lu Xu picked his eyebrows. There was an evident difference in their aptitudes, and directly sending this to the class group would agitate everyone. Could it be that he wanted to split the class according to their strengths? Just like exams in the past, when academic results were used. Now it's declaration of their aptitudes and even their training progress in future? This was to force everyone to improve. It seemed like the government was calm and collected in handling this matter, but this did not mean they were kind. Seeing Shi Fei send the document in the chat group, everyone immediately opened it, curious to find out their own aptitudes. If they could have tier A aptitude, wouldn't that mean their training will be much easier in future? Some of their faces changed when they opened the document. Some were happy, while there were some who didn't utter a word. Lu Xu wasn't that impatient. He looked from top to bottom, wanting to understand what was the standard in his class. No one belonged to tier A while there were three in B, namely Lu Li, the new desky Jiang Shui, and a name which was foreign to him. Lu Xu looked over at Lu Li, only to notice that he could no longer hide his joy. In contrast, his desky Jiang Shui was calm and collected, with no evident emotion shown on his face. How many people actually thought that Jiang Shui was a girl? Lu Xu thought interestingly. Jiang Shui chose to be his desky this afternoon. Who knew what this person was thinking, choosing the floor mat beside Lu Xu? Scrolling down, he saw more tier Cs, around 25% of the class. Then there was tier D, which consisted about two-thirds. There was a small number of tier E students remaining. This meant that everyone was at about the same level, and tier B was already considered to be very good aptitude. Since tier A existed, it meant that there were definitely tier A rated people within the black coats. Where else could tier A come from? It seemed like there would always be someone stronger, no matter the tier. Lu Xu then looked at his own class. Damn it, he was one of the three students in tier F.
What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 